Hi everyone, this is Diagarajan, a retired deputy chief engineer from Indian Railways. In this video, I'm going to say all about points and crossing in Indian Railways. It's a part one video. Uh, I'm just I'm going to cover parts and components of the uh, points and crossing. Okay. Um, and uh, also, I want to say I'm having my website that uh, ptrenwgsoft.com. Uh, you can also visit that website there also i will put this video and also one more uh, provision i've given that is for quiz so after watching the video you can just uh, use the quiz uh you can you know may practice so that you can answer and uh, can practice yourself uh, and particularly those who are uh, i mean preparing for uh, any competitive examination railways or any examinations uh, related to the railways okay it will be useful okay uh anyway uh, without further ado we'll go to the subject so what is points and crossing so it is an insulation provided in the track to transfer the trains from one track to another okay it is an uh, insulation or it is an arrangement provided in the track to transfer the trains from one track to another i think most of you know would have seen the station yards and major, major stations uh, there you can see so many lines parallel and non parallel lines are connected together forming a major network of track okay this is what we are seeing here is a typical layout of a major yard you can see how many lines are there see they are all connected together the train from one end to the other uh, end it can go okay possibly because of the connections so for the purpose of the connection you know, we are using the, the insulation the device is called the points of points and crossings so you can see here the train coming from here it can go to either this line or this line okay such a way it has been designed and at the same time the train coming from here or here can go to the one line single line okay so uh, so such a way this arrangement has been designed it is called to points on crossing so mainly you know the front portion you can see there is an arrangement so you, you know so using this one this is operating this portion it can be you know i mean uh, set for moving the train for rolling the train from this line to this line or this line to this line okay so this turn the points on crossing otherwise called as turn out also so points on crossing otherwise called as turn out okay then actually the turn out points on crossing consisting of three parts namely switch portion crossing portion leading portion okay this is a, a drawing uh, of uh, a turn out you can see here uh, you can see you know the front portion front portion is called the switch the rear portion is called the crossing the in between you know between the switch portion crossing portion is called the lead portion so it is having the three part three portion of points of crossing so coming to the switch portion you see uh, there are a lot of components are here it is all very very critical uh, location because see on any track you know we have only two rails there connected with the sleepers okay fastened down but it is not so here uh, so it has so many components are there and uh, because of that the the location is considered to be a important and critical and a lot of precautions we have to take and a lot of care we have to take so coming to the point i mean components you see here this is a joint no the front side the no? first joint okay this points on crossing connected with the strike this straight track is there connected this uh, connect track is connected with the this points on crossing so the first joint is called the stock rail joint actually this rail is termed as a stock rail and this also termed as a stock rail that means uh, this is a uh, fixed with the sleepers firmly it is not movable it is a permanently it is fixed um since it is a stock rail uh, you know goes to main actually we can take this track this path as a main line and this path as a turn out line or loop line okay so whatever stock rail now is in the main line is called the main stock and whatever stock rail is in the turn out line is called the turn out stock or loop stock okay so that is why the stock rail is connected with the straight track no that is why this joint has to term to be a stock rail joint okay name it as stock rail joint srj and of course these are stock rails as already defined and this called tongue rails 
because you see this is a talk right now it is for fixed not not movable non movable no but the tongue rail is a movable this is a okay and it is just fixed at the on look point on a point that point is called heel up switch with respect to heel up switch you know this point only this tongue rail taking the movement so like that the two tongue rails are there they are interconnected with the help of structure bars called structure bars it's called leading and following sometime one two three like we have so interconnected this will be fixed shock rail but the two tongue rails you know it is movable with respect to the heel up switch and they are connected together with the help of structure bars okay and uh, it is such a way designed uh, when uh, one side will there will be opening one one setting there will be one side opening other side will be butting that means when uh, this uh, tongue rail is butts against uh, the turn out stop and uh, then there is opening in the uh, main line side i mean main stop so that whatever train comes here you no know, it will be take and will be go straight in the main line okay when it is it's called uh, normal position it's called normal position when the tongue rail set to i mean uh, house to uh, turn out stock and when there is opening in the uh, main stock side and uh, the the position is called normal position in this case the whatever train comes it will take a main line movement at the same time when it is reverse that means when the tongue rail of the the tongue rail is uh, butting against the main stock and there is opening in the uh, loop side loop line side this is okay in this case what out train comes okay this will go to the turn out line this position is called reverse position the other position so okay not this position when it is set in a reverse way it's called a reverse position in that case the train what out train comes from this line will be a uh, take on to the turn out line or loop line okay such a way designed here okay on the whatever the tongue rail you know will be floating it is floating and it uh, with respect to this heel also just like a hinge it is acting as a hinge and this is exactly you know it is a uh, uh, sitting over the slide chairs we have slide chairs arrangement will be there this uh, two tongue will be okay slide uh, sitting on the slide chairs and uh, will be greased and it will be free floating either it can be moved this way or that way to set the points on crossing for main line to set the points on crossing for loop line okay so this is about the uh, switch portion actually this is called stock rail this is called uh, tongue rail forming a point or a half set of switch like the other side also will be there so all put together you know compare by, you know with the you know two stock rail at the two tongue rail i mean uh, forming a uh, switch is complete set is called arrangement is called switch up to the heel of switch so coming to the rear side is called crossing assembly where you can see here this is a crossing portion and uh, this is only crossing portion from here to here this joint to this joint the front joint is called toe of crossing this toe toe of a crossing the rear side rear joint is called heel of the crossing heel of crossing and also uh, we can see in detail about the uh, crossing actually it is having the vps and is called the wing rails this is called vps this is called the wing rail okay wing rail in between you know the narrow portion is called the throat throat of the crossing and also both sides will have the check rail also here this crossing why the crossing i uh, you know okay you know it, it is made like that you no know, for facilitating the uh, movement of vehicle to cross the other track okay suppose the train comes from uh, the main line it has to go to the main line but whereas the turnout line track is there so it has to cut across and pass okay actually our railway vehicles having the flanged wheels you know suppose if connection continuity is there it mount over that is why facilitating the crossing there will be some discontinuity there will be some discontinuity for facilitating the movement okay uh, for the main at the same time whatever train comes you now goes to the turnout line it has to cut across the the main track main line track main line rail so that is why that rail also it should have the discontinuity so for uh, purpose of you know for the safe crossing of uh, the vehicle from you know coming from one track one track i mean one track either to go to main line or go to turn out 
uh, some arrangement has to be made given duly giving in at some discontinuity that has been made in the crossing portion and uh, here you can see here the this is your uh, uh, loop line uh, vehicle movement gauge phase and uh, there is a discontinuity here because this this line has to be cut this line has cut now there is discontinuity so that vehicle will come here safely it will go to him, this loop line the same time in the train come here one wheel will go no problem the other wheel will come here and it has to cut this the loop line rail cut so there must some discontinuity so that the wheel comes here flange wheel comes here it will safely cross the crossing goes this side at the same time you know this is very very critical because there is a discontinuity and also there is an unguided gap be there so and it has to every every you know every moment on the during the, the crossing should be uh, should be ensured whether it is the, the wheels are crossing safely and for the purpose you know we are providing check wheel why it is providing check wheels on both sides means suppose when there is any mainline movement is there one side the wheel will be here there is no problem because it is straight continuous but whereas the wheel is coming you know the wheel coming from this line when it is crossing here there is an unguided gap and uh, because unguided gap you know by mistake it can the wheel uh, instead of going to the main line path it may go to the loop line side once it is going what will happen this wheel goes to the main line this this wheel go to and loop line there will be a derailment okay taking a different path it leads to derailment that is why the moment has to be both checked for the purpose of that no check has been provided so that when the wheel comes here it will be ensured safely to cross the uh, path i mean uh, rail to take a right path similar way for uh, moment of uh, loop line you know the wheel coming here no problem it will safely go same time the wheels coming with this line other line it has to this portion has to safe crossly safe instead of taking the other route it has to take this route for checking purpose the check wheel is provided it will check the wheels ensure the right path movement okay this is something about the the crossing okay so this is switch portion this is a crossing portion so the input you know it's called a lead portion it's called a lead portion because you know this water train coming from here it has to uh, go no it has to go leading to the crossing portion that is why it's called a uh, lead portion of the points of crossing lead portion of the turn out okay something brief about the uh, points of crossing or a turn out so this is uh, just to overall view i want to show to you of your points of crossing here you can see here Mm, actually this is our srj it is not visible anyway i will go parts by parts in detail in the next uh, coming slides uh just to have some idea the view you can see here this is your stock rail main stock this is your uh, turnout stock this is your uh, two tongue rails you know as i told told you this both stocks are fixed the sleepers some arrangement chair arrangement is there it is fixed it is non movable but whereas the tongue rail you know this is your heel up crossing it is connected just like a hinge it is acting with the heel blocks are there bolted bolted okay with respect to this location this tongue rail will float flutch for float deflect i will say deflect because here it is not fixed it is just uh, moving over the slight chair it's like this all greased you know for purpose of easy movement it's all greased with respect to the heel up switch the tongue rail will move because they are interconnected both tongue rail interconnected will ensuring some gap one side housing other side there must be gap okay such a way it is fixed and connected both tongue rails are connected with the help of structure bar it's called leaning structure bar is called following 1 2 3 like that is all there okay so that it is connected uh, with the pull rod and all and connected to the uh, no uh, motor operate motorized system so that this, this will be operated from the uh, cabin or i mean uh, the station okay uh, well, since it is pulling push you know if it is there this tongue rail position can be set to main or set to loop line okay uh, this is actually the set to reverse position because you know the tongue rail is uh, butts against the uh, main line stock rail and there is opening in the loop line side so that when train comes here it will go to loop line is going to reverse position when it is a normal position means uh, this tongue rail will butts against the loop line stock 
and opening will be in the main side. So when there is a case, there is a, there is a case the train comes here, it will go to the main line. Okay. Uh, this is about just overall view of a uh, points and crossing. This rear side is crossing. This is our hill up, so this is the late portion. The rear side, no, it is not, it is far away actually. This is our crossing portion. So we will see in detail in the, the upcoming slides. Okay. So parts of points and crossing, as I already told you, no. Uh, parts, first is switch portion. Uh, switch means what? Uh, pair of tongue rail, already discussed anyway, you can see the uh, actual uh, definition, okay. Uh, how it is defined, pair of tongue rails and stock rails with the fittings and both tongue rails connected together with such a pass form a switch, this is a switch, okay. Having pair of uh, tongue rail and uh, stock rail and uh, the tongue rails are connected to the help of uh, such a pass form a switch, is called switch, okay, it's called switch, like that. Crossing. What is crossing? It is a, it is a device provided at the point where the two rails are crossing each other here. Two rails are crossing each other here to facilitate the flanged wheel of the railway vehicle to cross from one track to other one track. Okay, that's called crossing. This is a facility provided. Uh, okay, this this facility is called crossing. And lead portion is the, this is the portion of track connecting the switch portion and the crossing portion. The switch portion is crossing portion in between, no, connecting this both is called switch portion. And how it is defined, right hand uh, or left hand, I don't know how we can see here. Suppose uh, when we are standing, this directional movement facing, this directional movement should be there. And we are uh, standing here facing the points on crossing. Suppose, with respect to you know, our position, when a turnout takes place in the right hand side, it's called the right hand switch. A tight on turnout. When the direction, no, turnout side uh, direction, no. When it is left hand side, it's called left hand switch or left hand turnout. Okay. So, this is the way we have to, we are identifying whether it is a left hand turnout or right hand turnout. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, coming to the type of switches, originally we had uh, uh, two type of switches, uh, uh, namely stop switches and split switches. Uh, stop switches means, you know, uh, the time there was no tongue rail arrangement, only the, the track itself will move, you know, here and there to uh, set the route. Uh, and subsequently, because of the some uh, difficulties faced, you know, that type of switch, then uh, they have gone for the uh, split switches. The split switches means, you know, it is a stock rail and a tongue rail arrangement. So, whatever, you know, we have at present, you know, the the same type. It was introduced at the time and it was being followed. Even now, we follow the uh, split switches only. Okay. Uh, even the split switches, uh, you know, uh, the initial time, uh, there was undercut switch. The undercut, that's also become obsolete now. The undercut switch means, you know, this, this is a stock rail, this is a stock rail and tongue rail arrangement. Actually, the stock rail, some portion of... Uh, flange will be cut and removed in order to uh, house the tongue rail, okay, uh, to ensure proper housing, uh, okay. So, this was made like that and uh, what happened, no, because of, you know, the portion of uh, some flange, you know, is being removed, uh, that portion became weak and uh, because of that, you no, know, they had been experiencing some uh, failure in the stock rail. That is why this also has been uh, dispensed with, uh, then they have gone to the other type, it's called overheading switch. Okay, the overheading switch, you know, it here this also stock rail and tongue rail arrangement. Here the stock rail is not disturbed at all, so this will be as it is. Okay, as it is, uh, it's not touched at all. This is as stronger as it is, and uh, only thing, this tongue rail, you no, know, it has been uh, uh, planned and machined to accommodate uh, to house properly with the stock rail. Um, okay. And but, uh, of course, this will be overriding the overriding the flange, okay, overriding the flange, instead of uh, damaging the stock rail and you know the planing and machining has been done uh, in the uh, tongue rail only, tongue rail only. So in detail, we'll see in the upcoming slides, okay. This is about the overriding switch. This is being followed now, okay. 
then of course you know oh, nowadays uh, we have oh, this one of oh, late uh, the thick of suja has been introduced okay here uh, this tongue rail is being manufactured uh, from the normal rails normal rail section whatever rail we have you know normal rail itself uh, it is a uh, uh, planned admission to our requirement uh, okay requirement but whereas this this is this is different uh, because this is slim you know this web is uh, very slim this is just the same thickness no it's because same rail no uh the normal rail only it is being manufactured no this one so thickness also very less at the same time since we are planning you know this is a very very uh, slender and uh, more flexible and uh, during you know this uh, train movement there will be some deflection will be there and uh, the lateral stability is not that much so in the case of word switch that is why to in order to strengthen the you know the uh, i mean switch portion uh, because of you know high speed and high speed and uh, now it was contemplated to uh, strengthen the tang rail so for that you know uh, the thick rail thick of switch has been introduced thick of switch you see here this is a different this height of the tang rail is almost off then also thickness of web also it is more and uh, it is just uh, um, is this, this this is being manufactured not from the normal rail this manufactured from a yeah asymmetrical rail section the separate uh you know some asymmetrical rail section has been uh, rolled manufactured and from that to the required shape it is being machined but of course i, I think uh, now nowadays i mean I, in india it is not started rolling this one this type of uh, asymmetrical rail section but in my manufacturer outside and it is being imported and here this is uh, being machined and here also in order to get a reduced switch angle some uh, minor machining is done in the stock rail also so that it will be able to get a perfect fit and get in there reduce the switch angle and it can uh, has a very thick web thick web and height also reduced so because it is very very sturdier and strong enough to take the lateral stability and it is uh, being nowadays introduced in uh, all high speed routes and also even turn out also because of the sturdier then uh, the loop line speed also has been increased in nowadays okay and this is being a uh, rolled i mean manufactured from the asymmetrical resection like there is is due to 49 is due one that is 2 gauge is gauge for that okay this is something about it and also here uh, the, the the law end of this uh, tangle you know the full normal rail section will be resumed uh, to connect with the our uh, lead rail okay so uh, this is something about the uh, thick of switch and in detail about the thick of switch you will see him yeah, in a separate video okay Okay, this is about the type of switches. That means nowadays we are having only overhead switches. Sub switches are dispensed with; it's not in use. It's obsolete. Only this type of overhead switches are mostly used. And uh, now gradually, this thick of switch has been introduced, and all high speed routes now we started replacing with the thick of switch. So this is something about the type of switches. And. Uh, So coming to the 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 other type, you know, curved switches we used to see, straight switches and curved switches we can see here. Uh, so even now also, see we are maximum we are using everywhere curved switches only. So straight switch also nowadays we have reduced, but all we have we will be having only in the uh, some yards we have. Okay. Uh, here you know the stock rail will be there, the tang rail will be straight. There won't be any curvature because what will happen when train comes here the wheel. Suddenly it takes a turn and uh, you know starts it and just goes the loop line side. So that is why because sudden change in no direction, there will be jolting jerk at all. That is why all um, mostly we don't have any main line and running line uh, passenger line. We don't use it. Uh, it is all nowadays uh, nowhere we are using it. If at all it may be and the only yards some station I mean goods yards okay like that. And uh, another type you know in that area uh, sometimes fixed heel type we have you know loose heel type we have. Clearly, this is called a loose heel because here joint is there. No, block loose. I mean, heel block will be there. There will be four bolts here, two bolts, and here here two bolts. The two bolts will be tight, and the two bolts will be loose, uh, so that you know it, it will be operated. It will be operated. It's called a loose heel switch. So even side switch also we had been having uh, side switch with fixed heel, side switch with loose heel arrangements. This also all will all will became obsolete now. Okay. Uh, However, for uh, academic interest, no, just uh, I will just I want to explain it. Uh, as far as this uh, uh, stretch is concerned, the switch angle is uh, 
the you know the the intersection of this is the gauge line of the tongue rail and this is the gauge line of the uh, stock rail that intersecting a point that's called the tts theoretical top switch okay actually this is your tongue rail no normally uh, it will not be um, the fine edge knife edge because knife edge is what will happen when any wheel comes it will hit to the knife edge it will break that is why to give you some uh, strength you know in the in the i mean entry point uh, this is being a uh stopped i mean some six sum of thickness at the toe of the the toe of switch is given so this is called actual toe of switch but the extension of the gauge line intersecting the gauge you know gauge line of the stock rail is called a theoretical toe of switch theoretical toe of switch tts means theoretical toe of switch ats means actual toe of switch okay and the the angle which makes that means uh, the gauge line of the stock rail and the gauge line of the tongue rail you know, intersecting point whatever angle makes is called a switch angle as well as straight switch is concerned okay, okay this is called a hill of switch okay hill block and like that you know in case of curved switches you know because curved switch means what why since that uh, to ensure the smooth entry in the uh, turn out side the strung rail have been made as a curve given curve some pretty curve is introduced so that you know uh, there will be uh, of course some uh, entry you know the smoothness will be able to ensure as for well, this case is concern uh, here you see this is a gauge line of uh, uh, stock rail this is a this is a gauge line actually but uh, what we have to do here also we are ensuring six sum thickness at the top switch that is that point is called the actual top switch okay and the and uh, when we when we are drawing a tangent this is your curve you know this is your curve this is a curve you know gauge line is actually curve this is a curved tongue rail so when you are drawing a tangent at the at ats okay and the gauge line of the ats that line will intersect with the the gauge line of the stock rail that is called tts so whatever angle it makes this gauge line of the stock rail and the the tangent not drawn at the uh, ats that intersecting point you know so whatever angle makes it is called switch entry and as well as curved switch is concerned okay so this is between the straight switch and the curved switches uh, how the switch and entry angle is defined okay how the switch angle is considered okay of course this is all nowadays uh, is also obsolete now getting obsolete okay now we have everywhere only curved switches and and the fixed degree this is called fixed degree here you know this is loose degree some joint will be there now here nowadays you don't have any joint this tongue rail no extends even beyond the heel of switch also this portion is completely fixed this portion only uh i think um, just like a tongue to act okay it is movable it is just floating over the side chest this point is called the heel of heel block and uh, this heel of switch this is heel block this is heel of switch here normally two bolts will be having uh here the center line of the the two bolts you know this is called uh, uh at to that point is heel block this is a um, heel of switch as well here is concerned the joint joint gap will be there no that the gap here also the gap will be two so that whatever line drawn here no imagine line that makes your uh, heel of switch here the the image line drawn between the two bolts okay the heel of is called a heel of switch so this is something about the um, switch and triangle and uh, the heels heel of switch and the tts and ats okay of course this you can forget no nowadays we don't use where well, you must be very very uh, okay this portion okay uh, throughout this area then uh, to define uh, how to define the stock rail joint this joint of joint of stock rail with the running rail at approach so whatever already discussed you know the first joint of uh, the point at the approach is called a stock rail because the joint connected is a stock rail no uh, the stock rail is called stock rail joint and uh, coming to the theoretical toe of switch here, it is defined as in case of straight switch as the point of intersection of the gauge line of a tongue rail at its its and its stock rail in close to position okay this is a i already in the previous slide no i had discussed it. the point of intersection of the gauge line of a tongue rail at its its and its stock rail in a close to position but in the case of you know curved switches it is the point of intersection of the gauge line of the stock rail to the imaginary tangent drawn at the 
uh, actual toe of switch okay that way this is a uh, tts point this is tts, TTS okay the intersective point the gauge line of the stock rail the gauge line of the uh, tongue rail now where intersection is called tts but in the curved switches the tangent drawn at the ats that line okay this is something about the tts then actual toe of switch is uh, it is the first tip of a uh, tongue rail visible to the eyes that means it's some um, normally that uh, the edge you know we don't uh, have knife edge actually to have uh, you know to avoid a uh, hitting of vehicle uh, with the uh, tongue rail getting damaged you know we want to ensure some thickness so that is normally we used to ensure six sum of thickness at the toe of switch so that point is actually actual toe of switch and switch angle as a day uh, i explained uh, the the same thing whatever the angle at the theoretical switches that means it is the angle between the gauge of the tongue rail and stock rail close position uh, this is called uh, this is I guess size switches. In case of curved switches, it is the angle between the gauge line of stock rail to the imaginary line drawn, tangent drawn at the actual top switch. Okay, it's called otherwise called as switch entry angle. Okay, so this is something about the uh, TTS, ATS, and switch angle. Okay, I think you have understood. So loose switch already I told that this we have dispensed. We are dispensed with. We are not using it if. And nowadays we have only a fixed article. Okay, fixed article. Uh, this this portion will not have any joint at all. Okay, and of course this is a throw. Throw means you know, then whenever the uh, tongue rail you no know, housed butts with the stock rail. Okay, there is zero gap when it is opened for this uh, some movement. No, this rail movement. This will be opened. The amount of you know the opening we are providing is called throw. Okay, it's called a toe opening. Otherwise, it's called a toe opening. Okay, so minimum values have been given. They were supposed to follow that. Okay, 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 right. Then switch components. Uh, okay, uh, this again I am showing the full view of uh, your uh, points and crossing, particularly the switch portion. I just uh, want to say one by one the components. What is that? This is stock rail. This is stock rail joints. So let you know first joint. Okay. This right track will come. It will connect with the point point at the approach. The first joint is called the stock rail, which is connected with the stock rail. So normally um, nowadays, you know, to have a proper running, ensure a good running, we used to weld this rail also. The problem is uh, sometimes there will be wearing out of uh, stock rail, tongue rail will be there. That is why necessarily the stock rail has to be renewed along with the tongue rail. So in that case, if we are welding, it will be a problem. But even then, you know, then we are welding it for a smooth running. It okay, running. Then uh, uh, this is called tongue rail. This is called tongue rail. I already told you know. The tongue rail uh, is just connected together with the help of uh, this stretcher bar. The first one is leading stretcher bar, and subsequent uh, stretcher bars called following. Following stretcher bar one, two, three like that. They are connected. The two tongue rails are connected together with the help of stretcher bars or insulated. In case of insulated rail. And uh, I think this uh, tester bar will run under the uh, rail flange. Of course, this and all will be connected only in the up to the lug only. But actually, this tester bar will connect the lug as well as it will extend uh, beyond the uh, lug, go under the flange, so that uh, to avoid you know lifting of tongue rail up. Okay, so that uh, we, uh, that is that way it is designed. However, we used to ensure some clearance also under that, some 3 mm like that, clearance is being uh, ensured, some 1.5 to 3 mm like that, okay. This is called, this is uh, uh, something about your structure bars. So, it is connected such a way to ensure proper opening, that means opening in one side. When, a, when it is housed in one side, other side, there, there should be some opening for permitting the wheel movement, okay, the track. Actually, this has been set in a reverse position, that means the uh, set to your turnout line because this uh, tongue rail has been housed to the main line stock and this, this side there is opening that means the movement is permitted here to loop line side so we will ensure in the some toe opening this is called to throw already i discussed the throw opening throw no toe opening has been specified how much should be there for uh, new new line for existing uh, this thing and all everything is it that limitation and all i will tell you okay this is this is a, your throw this is tongue rail 
So since they are connected together, you know, the entire tangential moment will be moving here and there, just like a tongue, you know, with respect to heel of switch. This is called this is called here, yeah, heel of switch. This is called heel of switch. This is completely fixed. Okay, heel blocks are fixed. And uh, after that, you know, completely like a normal track, it will be fixed. Rails are will be fixed. But uh, from heel of switch to this end, you know, only stock rail will be having the uh, fixed. This is called stock rail okay, because uh, completely fixed with the sleeper on both sides. But whereas the tongue rail is, uh, it is uh, uh, not fixed. Eh? It is uh, it is just uh, uh, held by the only structure bars. It will be floating on the slide chairs. Okay, uh, just like uh, it will, uh, this, it will, this heel will act as a hinge. With respect to heel block, this this uh, tongue portion now will be moving here and there uh, in order to set to our requirement. Whether it is um, uh, we want to set to main line movement, it will be set accordingly. When it is want to set to loop line movement, it will be set accordingly. Now it has been set to loop line. It's called a reverse position. Whenever any point is set to loop line side or turn line, it's called a reverse position. This is a reverse because. The main line, no, it's butt against the main line. Opening is here, moved will be here. At the same time, when it is operated uh, the other way, when it when this uh, tongue rail, you no, know, this uh, butts against uh, your loop line stock, and there is a opening in the uh, stock main line side. Okay, that portion is called a normal normal portion. So that is the case, you know, the um, train coming from the line will go to, you know, go in the main line. Okay. Uh, this is something about the tongue rail and how they are connected okay, together. Okay, this is called slide jazz over which only the uh, tongue rail is moving and it will be periodically greased and to have the easy movement. Okay, without having any obstruction. Okay, however uh, they are connected. The tongue rail is connected to the, with the help of you know some pull rods and all and connected direct to the uh, even this called some motorized. Okay. Uh, this one and uh, this will be operated from uh, this station. Uh, so accordingly, no, this will be set where uh, it will be pulled, pushed to set the position normal or uh, reverse position. Okay. And uh, also coming to hmm, already we have discussed. No, this is a gauge plate actually here because here the gauge to be ensured properly. There should not be any variation. That is why. Those days we are having a you know, wooden sleeper. There will be spike killing. Often uh, there will be some gauge, you know, problem will be there. Okay, that is why uh, to strengthen they used to plate, put the plate. But even now we are even the concrete sleeper we are providing the gauge type plate. It's called a gauge type plate to ensure the uh, gauge. Okay, mm, no variation at all should be permitted here. Uh, and coming to here, already told it's a slide chair, and here, here is a junction of it. That means you know, as I already told you, this is your tongue rail. Okay, tongue rail will take this tongue rail. It is machined in such a way. Okay, uh, it is actually machined, planed from a normal rail. Whatever rail we are using, you know, same rail only. It is all manufactured uh, in the workshop and uh, designed and uh, manufactured. I mean, manufactured. And here, you know, this will. This is such a way designed. Uh, it will override on the override on the flange of the stock rail. And also here, six mm thickness will be ensured, and uh, the only the uh, here one portion will be here. This portion will not be here. You know, it is such a way it's planned, and gradually, you know, even in the height also the here is somewhat lower to avoid hitting of uh, the tip hit, hitting with the wheel. So and gradually it is raised, and uh, one particular uh, this thing it is just uh, receiving the full sail section. Okay, this. Gradually, it is assuming its full rail section. That where it is raising the full section is called junction of it. Okay, it's called junction of it. So up to from here to here, this will be a thin here, and gradually it's the section is increased and it will rise. It will resume at a junction of it. Okay, it's called junction of it. Full rail section will resume here. Okay. So in this case, you know, at junction of it because of the overriding, you know, because he's a heel. And, uh, and uh, this uh, this flange is overriding on the uh, stock rail flange. That is why some six some of level difference will be here. Here, here, here will be here. Here uh, junction of it normally six some or level difference will be here. So because of the six some level difference here, there will be a twist design twist because here but when train running here, you no know, six some higher than the stock rail, but whereas 
compared to you know the stock rate so compared to stock rate that means six sum of lower here six sum of rise here so because of that you know when this loop line is okay but when the train is running in the main line the normal speed of 100 km h 120 km h when it is set to main line movement six sum of level difference will be here so it is there is a, since there is a design twist the running will be affected because of that is why even though uh, see everything is pakka because of some lacuna in the points and crossing the running will not be all right in the points and crossing there will be setting up of vibrations and more wear and tear so that is why in this location uh, uh, considered to be a critical and important okay so everything we'll see in the upcoming slides okay and this is uh, of course your hila switch as i already told you okay this is something about your switch portion um of course this is your heel i mean your crossing portion it is far off okay this is your lead portion let's see we will go to the next slide oh. then uh, as i told you you see no throw that is toe opening this is actually the uh, throw up switch throw up switch is uh, the distance through which the tongue rail moves at the toe from its closed position to open position this is is the distance is measured from the gauge line of the stock rail to inside non gauge face okay non gauge face only um that means uh, the opening is so uh, this is gauge face to here non gauge face this called the throw okay gauge face to non gauge face of the tongue called the throw okay and uh, okay to open of the open tongue rail it is measured at the actual toes okay uh for the existing is whatever you know the existing uh, track we are maintaining there 90 mm minimum we are ensuring that's okay but whenever we go for new works uh, any alteration we do you know existing works you know then we have to ensure 150 mm minimum we have to ensure okay that to opening but in case you know it can be increased up to 160 mm they say in the curved switches of course we do we have now only curved switches and thick of the general uh, we can go for up to 160 mm why 160 mm we say see um with the some uh, uh some requirement no the expert what is the requirement to obtain adequate grains between the gauge phase of stock rail and the tongue rail because uh, once we increase the um, this one no once we increase the uh throw what will happen since you know it is free only when we are uh, in bending this way this this side middle will go inside okay however we are providing some structure bar and are maintained in the uh distances maintain in the gap but even then you know when we are uh, reducing it this this uh, rail will tongue rail will go inside so the clearance here no here is very very close here the clearance will getting reduced so that is why when we are increasing once the mm we should ensure that proper clearance here to uh permit flange way clearance to the uh running track okay to the running track this is uh, uh, this is the want it actually okay that you have to ensure it but it is all possible in the case of thick of switch nowadays uh, when you are using it we are want to be were ensuring once it is mm i mean uh, a throw we want to provide now at the same time you know then uh, coming to heel of switch and heel block and all already told you know we have seen heel block is the first block from the toe of switch fixed between the tongue rail and the stock rail with the help of bolts okay in case of loose heel and it told imagine line between midway between the end and lead rail and tongue rail in case of uh, fixed rail switches it is a point on the gauge line of the tongue rail opposite to the center of the heel block okay center of the heel block follow that is a heel switch and the, i mean heel of switch and heel block something about it okay and this is a throw throw i told you know this is a gauge base to non gauge base of the tongue rail we are measuring this is a throw actually a closer view and uh, what is the heel divergence so heel divergence normally you know some measurement diameter is supposed to maintain ensure in the heel is heel divergence you see you know this is a, a heel block with respect to heel block heel only this is uh, uh, deflecting you know this is deflecting so this is just like a hinge is acting here we want to ensure the divergence how much diversion you want to ensure however the block will be there it will be permanently fixed however uh, we must ensure this dimension is given that means there is gauge base of the running rail no the stock rail and the gauge base of the tongue rail this is this not a clearance the heel divergence is not a clearance it is only heel divergence how much diversion takes place at the heel 
that means distance between the gauge end of the stock reel and the gauge end of the tongue reel at the heel the center of the heel block the heel so, okay. this is uh, about your heel divergence the value they are given for 1 in 12 curved switches 1.92.5 and 1 in 12 curved switches PSC 170 this is very important because uh, nowadays we don't have any side switches uh, we don't have MG also we are much bothered about only BG only curved only PSC so, two diamonds very important for objective questions over up in for examination okay for 1 in 8 and a half curved 1 in 8 because curved 1 in 8 and a half now this is normally diversion will be more that is a 1 in 2.5 1 into diversion is less normally that is why 175 so these two diamonds we must by heart switch angle for uh, various you know point that switch angle even even here also you forget about all uh, this one side switches and all and uh, even uh, uh, okay side switches partly curved and all and wooden type wooden also we don't have it only we are much concerned about the PSC and curved only so the bold okay uh, the letters, whatever, no, uh, that uh, must be very uh, okay. Thorough, then that means you must understand this one. We only need of curved on PSC 0 degree 46 59, and um, one in 12 curved on PSC 0 degree 20 for all 0 degree 20 switch angle. Okay, this then only one is 8, eight only 8 of curved switch only 0 degree 46 59, and for all uh, this one, no, one in 12, one in 16, one in 20 dollars switch angle is. 0 degree 20 minutes 0 second. So, this you must, you must keep in mind. Okay. And uh, regarding how 1 in 12 uh, and 1 in 12 and all, then we will uh, see uh, the upcoming slides. Because based on uh, we have different type of uh, switches 1 in 8 1 in 12, 1 in 16, because based on the diversion, how much diversion takes. Okay. When line goes straight, no, that uh, for how much units, how much diversion takes place, no, based on that is being defined. We will see in the upcoming slides. This heel divergence already discussed. You know, the gauge face, you no, know, the gauge face to gauge face of the tongue rail uh, heel divergence. It's closer position of that. Okay. Uh, already told, you no, know, that uh, tongue rail planing. Oh, I am talking about overheading switch. Overheading switch. You see, see. Uh, actually, this is a stock rail. This is tongue rail is machined. You know, uh, if you see the side elevation. Uh, this will be machining. This edge will be normally blunt uh, and uh, here thickness 6 we will ensure. Since it is blunt you know, to avoid any uh, breakage here and some uh, gradually it is just uh, for a distance the slope is given and subsequently again it is just uh, given and it is resuming the full height at a junction of head. I have told you know junction of head. Where the full cross section of the rail will be there. Full head will fit. Up to this there will be machining and uh, vertical as well as uh, lateral side complete machining here in order to house uh, properly on the stock rail. However, uh, here also since still uh, still it has to uh, floating you no, know, still it will go up to fill up switch. Up to that that stock rail has to override on the flange. That is why six sum of rice has been given here. Okay? Six sum of rice has been given. Six sum. Since due to six sum of rice, uh, you know here level difference will be there because between the stock and tongue rail, the level difference will be there. And with ref reference to next, uh, I mean other stock rail. The because normally when train running, you know, one uh, stock rail, other other wheel will be on the tongue rail, like that only. Okay, so one stock rail uh, uh, this side, and uh, here a tongue rail will be here, and six mm is above uh, then the the stock rail. So because of the six mm level difference, uh, always there will be uh, like a twist, and uh, the running will be not be uh, as good as we expect. Uh, there will be some jolting and jerking mean will be there, and vibration will be set as I told you, you know be there. So, this is all the one of the lacuna as well as void is concerned. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, let's see something about the factors of it in the running over the points and crossings. Uh, first, I think this I have not told. Uh, the kink at the toe of switch. Uh, right. Switch right in a, a turnout route. The turnout route actually is the stock rail uh, we used to provide um, slight kink at the uh, theoretical top switch to ensure the proper housing. Okay, however, when any train mode in the loop line uh, side, you know, because of the main slight kink, so there will be slight, uh, I mean, uh, some jolting will be there, and uh, that is one of the factor effect in the running over the points and grassing for the uh, loop lines in the loop line side. 
and uh, the second missing 120 cant because we don't provide you know only 20 cant in the points and crossing portion because of a crossing you know crossing portion we don't uh, it's common for both main lane movement as well as loop line movement so that is why to compensate you know to compromise we don't provide uh, this 120 cant that is uh, that is why for the entire uh, point you know we don't provide only 20 cant However, you know, the approach track, straight track, we have only 20. But suddenly, when it is entering, you know, with only 20 can't, suddenly it enter, enter into the uh, points and crossing. When there is no only 20 can't, there will be slight uh, running, okay, which is getting affected. Okay? That is also there. However, uh, we used to easing out, we used to do the easing out. Normally, you know, we, when we do have the PS sleepers and the approach some 4 5 sleepers, the only 20 can't will be eased out. From, from normal track eh, 1 in 20 then 4 sleepers is gradually this eased out and become 0 at the turn out ok points are crossing like that after the heel of crossing also it is getting eased out ok from 0 to 1 in 20 candy is provided then subsequently see this is the way it is done however it is that the 1 in 20 candy is, is not provided in the points are crossing area this is one of the factors and the entry from strike to curve without transition ok uh, because when uh, train negotiating that turnout side, no, it's coming the straight track, and again, no, it takes the turnout. Uh, but suddenly it takes a curvature. Okay, when there is no, but actually there is no transition curve. So because of that also, uh, the running is affected, and uh, lead curve without super elevation. So is also for loop line side, no, it is the curvature is there, but there is no super elevation. So that is also for the loop line movement, the running is greatly affected and 6 summer level difference of switch portion but it, it is applicable for both uh, you know this one no loop line side main inside but loop line okay no problem because speed is less but over the main line the 6 summer no level difference uh, it's affecting the running because you know normally as I already told you know so uh, the junction of it 6 summer rise will be there the tongue rail portion uh, that is with reference to your stock rail. But normally, we used to maintain the track, you know, level for stock to I mean uh, stock rail to stock rail only we used to ensure. But however, you know, the tangle since uh, it is the rise uh, six summer above the stock rail, since it is a level difference, uh, it also uh, because of this uh, the running will be uh, slightly affected. And particularly the main lane, main lane would normally high speed, no, normally 100 km, 120 km, we try will run because of the difference the slight jolting will take place okay these are one of the factors then the entry from curve to straight it is also slow plane side from you know when the train coming from i mean uh, crossing side no this side and when it is you know it's a uh, curvature and again straight away no it's uh, directly it goes to straight track but there is no transition no so this is uh, one of the factors and dynamic gauge widening that is uh, in case of you know uh, strong, as far as we are concerned we are using a uh, uh, widening switch uh, because what is you know this uh, strong rail is uh, very slim and uh, actually whenever we we day the points are supposed to ensure for some distance then the tangle rail should uh, but with the stock rail then only even the train movement is a dynamic um, this thing uh, situation there should not be any deflection widening when there is any gap there will be widening because of the uh, it, it's all no it's very slim in slenderness you know as far as this uh, tangle is concerned so that is one of the factors but discarding with the crossing portion and guided gap so this is inevitable because crossing you know uh, we are providing the discontinuity and that's it very necessary for the uh, flange level to cross from one track to other in both main movement and uh, stock field movement so there is unguided gap also because of that so this is uh, when there once there is reduced the discontinuity there will be more impact more impact uh, you know knocking will be there and its maintenance problem will be there that portion because the impact uh, the sleeper under the i mean uh, uh, crossing will have you know uh, formation of groove crushing or rubber pad you know, wear and to the clips, uh, liner, crushers, everything will take place. That is, this portion will be very, very critical and often, uh, you know, you have to periodically inspect and you have to give some attention. So, this, uh, this is one of the main uh, problem we have. 
but of course uh, uh, yeah, i don't know in future may come some movable crossing something like that so that uh, for uh, just like a switch okay the crossing also will have some switch and continuity will be ensured so as of now we have only uh, this crossing with the and gated cap this going to be the and gated cap and uh, frozen fish bladder joint because normally the crossing is connected with the fish blades of the approach to our crossing and gilla crossing uh however nowadays you know it, it is being uh, stipulated that we are supposed to have the frozen fish bladder joint so that means capless joint so for that we are supposed to provide a machined uh, fish plate uh, to ensure zero gap and even then uh, since due to the discontinuity and there will be some uh, knocking will be there and impact will be there so these are all the uh, i mean the facts separating the uh, running over the points and crossing and uh, some of the drawing numbers of the point different uh, okay point that just again i just given you just uh, for 50 kg 60 kg 1 in down in 12 16 20 and also for the a uh, thick of switch okay and symmetrical split so uh, for uh, okay so these are the uh, for uh, different turn out for the different turn out these are the uh, drawing numbers complete layout okay this just for your reference okay this are in the general form of manual okay and all this you will see here regarding uh, the symmetric split also will see in the uh i mean maybe next video or uh, the end of slide end of this video okay okay then coming to the crossing assembly so this is a crossing portion i already told you know this is a crossing portion see crossing portion is you know we have the there is a crossing with the check rails on both sides so in the beginning of this you know video also i told you know the so i told this is a crossing portion it is having a this is a wing rail this is this is sorry this is a v piece this is a wing rail both side this is a throat this is unguided cap and check rail uh, we have to provide on both sides to ensure the vehicle going in the uh, okay mile line to go in the right path At same time coming going in the loop line so has to go down the loop line okay should take the right path for ensuring that you know we are providing check rail so that one wheel will go here other wheel uh, okay it will go cross the unguided cap so for guiding purpose this check rail is provided so that so uh, this will be checked the wheel whether it is going in a right path on both sides like that okay this is a actually crossing assembly and uh, this is a heel of crossing this toe toe of crossing heel of crossing check rails throat of crossing actual nose of crossing so actual nose of crossing here also just like a switch you know we used to provide we ensure some six some of thickness here so we are not providing you know knife edge knife edge it will break that is why some thickness will be ensured here okay this is a actual nose of crossing the extension of the gauge line of the crossing uh, both sides okay well intersect point no meet at point that that will be your theoretical nose of crossing this is a roughly about the i mean uh, crossing assembly uh is the, the crossing you know i mean the, the, we have different types so built up crossing cast manganese steel crossing you see steel is missing cast manganese steel crossing cms and weld double crossing weld double crossing i think you now will be about to come but right now you know uh, built up crossing and uh, built up crossing also slow, slowly we are eliminating we want to have have a very cms crossing Built up crossing means uh, you know it will be assembled. It will be the V piece will be separate and wing will be separate, and both will be connected together with the help of uh, nose blocks and uh, other uh, uh, CI blocks. Okay, and we will just assemble and uh, you know, we'll building up. That's called built up crossing. Cast manganese crossing is a uh, is one piece completely discast in a uh, this you know factory now as a one piece uh, increasing the manganese standard so that it will to take a more warranty. Okay. this only everywhere nowadays we are using cast manganese steel crossing okay uh, and weld double crossing and it is it come it just come in future will get it because uh, to avoid you know the joint not joint norm, normally you know it is weakest link of the our track that is we want to eliminate here also but as of now this uh, whatever built up crossing we get whatever um, built up crossing we weld it but at the same time you know it is it is you know it is all uh, life is very less built up crossing that is why we don't weld it and uh, used to provide uh, this one uh, fibrillar joint acidity 
But in the case of CM or crossing, it is having some life, even it can be reconditioned. So life is there. That is why it can be welded. But the present welded uh, CMS crossing is not available. Now uh, it has been uh, okay designed in such a way to weld also. Okay, that we are going to get the weldable crossing so that it can jo weld the joints. Once they welded, you know, there will be smooth running. Of course, uh, though we have the discontinuity here, this joint, you know, will have the continuity. To some extent, we will be able to ensure over the crossing. Good running. Okay, then uh, in detail, if you want to see about the crossing, this is you see, this is a V piece. The V piece, uh, if we take our uh, old and techno, this one built up crossing, this will be the point rail, one rail, this will be splice, splice rail, point rail, splice rail, and used to connect with the here uh, the most block will be there used to put up and also you will you'll be having the wing rail blocks will be there and uh, here also some throat block will be there block will be there so uh, this is a V piece combining you know this is considering of uh, uh, you know point rail and splice rail this is one piece then this is a wing rail another wing rail here so all okay will be assembled and connected bolted uh, using some nose blocks and other CA blocks will, will form a crossing complete uh, this is called toe of crossing I told this is a heel of crossing this is wing rail this is throat and this is your theoretical nose of crossing the actual nose of crossing you know here because we don't permit no, this one knife edge we don't permit because of uh, it may it be prone for any breakage that is why we used to ensure uh, some thickness here that point location called actual nose of crossing the extension of the gauge in of both uh, side you know meet at one point is called theoretical nose of crossing and you are supposed to ensure the wing rail clearance it's called wing rail clearance okay the train coming from the line it has, the flange will go, go here and uh, like that you know and uh, here it has to go here so that is why this clearance must be ensured and this angle this is our crossing angle that means uh, whatever angle makes you know both both kind is called angle crossing angle so it is it will vary according to your uh, used to say you know uh, designate one in eight points on crossing one in twelve points on crossing one in sixty one in twenty and all. it is based on this crossing also the diversion this is diversion no? for one uh, for uh, total unit diversion one unit uh, for total unit distance one unit diversion takes is called one in twelve when eight and a half uh, unit at eight point five meet eight point five unit uh, travel and one unit uh, diversion it's called uh, only it up okay okay anyway that we will elaborately discuss in the coming slides so this is about the crossing so crossing but nowadays we have only cms crossing cms crossing see everything is one piece this uh, everything cast in one piece cast manganese steel crossing we have present okay uh, that also we'll see so crossing angle is a, it is an angle contained between the gauge lines of the crossing gauge lines of the crossing you should define it by the number of crossing the one in eight and half, one in twelve, like they used to say. Uh, crossing angle will be there. We can work it out, and then simply use the number one in eight and half, one in twelve, like they used to say. Which is another thing, which is the cotage of the angle of crossing. So one, okay, one in angle, one in eight and half, is the cot of, okay, cot of, cot of equal to eight, eight point five. Uh, we will see that also. We will see in the coming slides. Okay. Uh, okay. This crossing number, as I already told you. If you want to designate a I mean points and crossing or crossing, we used to say no one in one in of means what one in eight point five unit one unit diversion takes place is called one in eight of crossing. And if it is twelve one for twelve, twelve unit distance and one unit diversion, one in twelve, and sixteen and one is one in sixteen and twenty or one it's called one in twenty. So like that it is designated. And if you want to know the crossing angle, you see. The, this is F. This is a normally if you want to know the angle of the crossing exactly in degree, uh, minutes, seconds. You know, tan F equal to what is your opposite side by adjacent side. So tan F equal to one by eight point five. Then F is equal to tan inverse of one one by eight point five. So F equal to sixty degree forty two minutes thirty five seconds. So as far as the only you know eight point five is concerned, the angle of crossing in degree minutes second is sixty degree forty two thirty five. Similarly for one in twelve. It is four degree forty by forty nine, and one one in sixteen. 
it is 3 degree 34 35 or 1 in 20 it is 2 degree 21 45 that means uh, this will be uh, more diversion okay this, this is uh, this is very very flat you know 1 in 20 is flat because the diversion is very less it is gradually if they get diversion that will be very smooth here compared to the 1 in 8 of here okay it's all not right so this is something about the crossing angle in terms of uh, degree is mean uh, minutes second and I told you know the cot of cot of that will tan of equal to 1 by 12 and uh, cot of you know cot of equal to what 1 by tan of actually cot of equal to 1 by tan of if that is the case cot of equal to simply number okay you know pretty well uh, trigonometry you know tan of equal to opposite by adjacent side that is uh, this thing and if you want to term you know this cot of cot of equal to 1 by tan of the 1 by tan of if we are putting you know we will get simply number so the cot of of this crossing is 12 cot of of this crossing is 8.5 16 20 like that okay this will be useful when you are doing a layout calculation and also will be more useful okay this is something about the crossing numbers and angle of crossing in degree minutes seconds so coming to the built up crossing i told you know this is a you know the image of built up crossing see here this is a v piece this is a v piece one is this is a point right this is a flight right i mean splice right okay one one this is one piece this will be connected and subsequently this is two wing rails this side this side and all are assembled and connected together with the help of the bolts the nose block throat block here here nose block will be here and here some uh, ca blocks so i think bolting down no it will form a crossing since it is you know assembled to one and uh, bolted because of the impact, no, there often there will be wear and tear. Sometimes the bolt will be missing, mold will be cracked, and there will be more wear and tear, getting loosened also. So, pre attention is used to give. And also, it's a normal steel only, it is made. That is why normal rail steel only. So, that is why more wear and tear also will take place. So, so often, you know, in high speed, we are providing because of traffic, heavy density, traffic density is high, there will be more and tear and uh, uh, frequent, you know. Uh, renewal has to be undertaken here. That's why build up crossing. Now it, we are slowly replacing the build up crossing with the other one, other improved one, cast manganese crossing everywhere. Okay, you will see the next one. Also. This in case this is your uh, wing rail clearance, it's throat unguided. This is a throat uh, train coming here. Now this will go and it will pick up this one. This portion is unguided, like that. Here coming gauge line is coming and it will go. This is the cap, goes to here. This is the cap, it's called a throat position. This is wing rail, wing rail clearance you must ensure. Okay, <coughs> when the board is loosened, the wing rail will, 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 will now the clearance will be more. So that is periodically checked and we should ensure. Okay, this is about the built up crossing. Coming to the CMS crossing, this is a CMS crossing nowadays we are providing. This is one piece, it is a one piece monolithic piece. It is a uh, called cast manganese steel crossing and it is a special no steel and uh, because of the addition of the manganese content you know uh, it will stand to the wear and tear and uh, it institute and every, everywhere now we are providing the this one um, cast manganese steel crossing okay there is no bolts nothing and all so no problem and uh, only thing you know here, uh, here also the joint, no, we have the joint and here we are providing the frozen joint, that means gapless joint we used to provide here, okay. Uh, machine, with the machine dish plate, gray plus joint we are providing here. And opposite side, no, we are providing check rail here for ensuring the right moment to the, the right path here, okay. Uh, since you, the, you see here, large ungated cap is here, the wheel when coming here, it has to go to only this line, main line, no, main line, no, main line when tra train travels, this will no problem. When this wheel comes, you know, after a year, okay, it has to travel, no, uh, with uh, no rail. It's called unguided gap. So it has to take this gauge line. And instead of that, if it takes this way, there will be derailment. Like that blue plane when it comes, you know, blue plane when it's coming here, it's going, you know, instead of going, this is gauge line, no, this gauge line, this is unguided gap. It has to go here, this gauge line. When this wheel goes here, and this wheel will go, like this you should not instead of uh, going this way when it takes this route it will become uh, a mishap so this is something about the uh, i mean uh, this overall I mean, picture i can i have some idea i just i am showing you can understand something about the cms crossing 
this is twelve cross and this is eleven cross. Okay. Then a closer view. This is the CMS crossing. You see here. This is the CMS crossing. This is all one piece completely. This, okay. This one piece. This is a frozen joint. This is a toe-up switch. Okay. No gap. When block is C block providing. We are uh, here actually. This uh, already pre-drilled hole will be there in the crossing. Only the draw hole we have to make in the rail. The hole we are making in the rail should be very strictly to the prescribed dimension we are supposed to drill. Uh, okay, and using the machine uh, fish plate, we will be able to enter the Europe. Yeah, this is eight a eight at TOC toe up crossing. This is at a heel up crossing like that. Okay, same thing. Then let's see uh, something about the check rail clearances and uh, wing rail clearances in the crossing assembly portion. See, the, as far as check rail clearance is concerned, you know check rail, no? This is the check rail actually we have provided for checking the, the movement of the vehicle up to, uh, no, up to ensure the uh, traveling in a right path. Okay. So here we have to provide some clearance. The clearance should be actually as per the this schedule of dimension. As per schedule of dimension, here you see 44 to 48. The minimum is 44, maximum is 48. Actually, this is the case of normal track, 1673 gauge, you know, normally our uh, BG broad gauge, you know, a gauge is 1676. In case of, you know, but for uh, wooden slip rental used to have. But as far as your uh, PS slipper is concerned, you know, the, you know, we have only 1673 gauge. So, in case of 1673, you know, for PS slipper turn on and all, this is like uh, 3 mm is reduced. That means, 41 to 45. So, this is a normal 1676, this is 44 to 48. But in the case of PSD pair, where we have the gauge of 1673, here it is 41 to 45. This is the range you are supposed to okay, ensure and keep in mind. And uh, as far as the obtuse crossing is concerned, diamond crossing that we will say, will say when you are going to diamond crossing, 41 mm here. We are, normally, we are providing obtuse crossing. Acute means less than ITM. Obtuse means more than 80. No, that portion uh, crossing, you know, we used to put some check rail. There you must ensure a clearance of 40 number. Okay, you will see when, when the subject coming. Okay. Okay, this is about the uh, check rail clearance on both sides you are supposed to ensure. And coming to the wing rail clearance, wing rail means what? This, you know, the crossing portion, uh, we have the wing rail. No. Actually, as well as CMS crossing, it is just cast, uh, but because of the wear under only, it will alter the wing rail that we are supposed to measure during the inspection. In the case of built-up crossing and because of the looseness of bolt, sometimes it may enlarge the uh, become more and uh, that, so that should be attended to. And for that, the clearance, how much they are given? Again, this is a 44 to 48. 44 to 48. And in case of uh, 1673, you know, gauge, uh, wherever we have, as well as PS slipper is concerned, it is 41 to 45. Okay, normal track, 44 to 48. In case of PS slipper track, it is 41 to 45. It is supposed to be ensured. Okay, this is about wing rail clearance, shadow dimension, as well as shadow dimension. Okay, then other important definitions means that is a crossover. You know, you would have seen the station yard, we have a crossover that means connecting two parallel line, you no. Know? One line will be introduced here, and here you are, you are able to ensure the movement from one line to other track, okay, and vice versa. At the same time, this will permit side movement also. Side movement also. This is a crossover. Only one crossover, no, this is a simply crossover. When another crossover overlapping with the other one, okay, this is called a scissor crossover, it will form some diamond, okay. Uh, okay, this is this is a crossover and scissor crossover. Only one crossover is simply crossover. When it is two crossover overlapping each other in the same location, forming a diamond is called a scissor crossover. It's called diamond crossing. It's called diamond. Instead, we are used to put diamond crossing. This is only the obtuse crossing. This is acute crossing. This is obtuse crossing. Here the angle will be more, and we used to put the check rail in the, here uh, normally uh for ensure the uh, the you know, movement without any you know, hitting of uh, nose and for that you know uh, as earlier we have seen in the previous slide they are given the clearance of some 41 mm okay that we are supposed to ensure okay and uh, this is something about the lead current turnout curve 
see in the turnout no points and crossing we have turnout curve turnout means otherwise called as turnout but y means is turning out so this is actually the your, your turnout curve or lead curve from ats to toc you know the whatever curvature we have here this uh, curved switch then heel then again no lead curve starts so entire uh, length from ats to toc is called a lead curve or turnout curve because turning out so the curve is turning outside of the uh, outside the main line this got turning out and after that you know we have the crossing the crossing portion normally straight only so yet the straight movement will be there and after that from here crossing to you know then uh, the other curve starts this is called a turn curve because the curve after the you know turn in and straight then again it is sorry turn out and it is straight and turning in that means again it is turning inside inside means it turning inside uh, because parallel to the main line track Okay, uh, this is called turn in curve. This starts from the heel up crossing and uh, till uh, it's a uh, uh, the parallel point. Okay, uh, tangent point when it meets with the uh, the straight parallel track. Okay, low plane or whatever maybe. Okay, this is something about the um, lead curve and the turn out curve. And uh, this is a machine joint. The machine joint means what already we have discussed, you know, in the crossing portion, we used to put some frozen joints and toe of crossing as well as heel of crossing, you know. They are used to provide the uh, specially designed, you know, machined, uh, machined fish plate. Normally, one meter long fish plate we used to provide, uh, but it is a machined fish plate, and uh, uh, but a lot of accuracy we are supposed to ensure so that we will be able to uh, ensure zero gap. Otherwise, there will be more, the chance for the, uh, you know, gap, okay. So the, here, this is the dimension we are supposed to enter. Here, you see here, this is one meter long fish plate here, and it, we are, uh, this is your crossing position. This is your uh, rail, no? After the heel up crossing, we have the rail. We are connecting it. As well as crossing portion cancel, we have the pre-drilled uh, pre holes in the crossing portion. Okay. Normally, uh, the diameter of the hole should be so 26.5 mm. That will be available in the crossing portion. A similar hole if you want to connect, no, we have to make in the rail also for uh, making the connections. But um, as a, we are supposed to ensure the joint, no, the rail also should be perfect, it should be vertical, it is not uh, any inclined and all, so that your perfect matching will be there. At the same time, we have to follow the pitch, correct pitch we have to ensure. Here you see, here uh, even the, here you see, equal pitch of 166 mm have uh, been given. Exactly, we have to mark and drill it. And uh, holes also, rail holes should be how much? 26.5 mm. And uh, of course, for fish plate hole, we have 27 mm. And fish bolt hole, 25 mm. So, there will be very, very uh, minute, minimum, uh, you know, difference is there. Okay. Here, uh, just uh, uh, with reference to this, 1.5 mm. And here, again, uh, uh, 0.5 mm. So, this much difference only is there. for uh, Just for easy putting of bolts only. But such a way, you know, uh, uh, we have to uh, drill holes and all, um, and we have to fix it, okay, uh, so that you will be able to ensure uh, zero gap. Suppose uh, if you are not proper doing, there will be a chance for the gap. Once the gap is there, what will happen, because it is a cast manganese is kind of crossing, you know, we are connecting, and there will be some impact, because the impact, there are chance for the breakage of the crossing, that is why here we are supposed to ensure zero gap. That is otherwise called as mean gap loss joint, we used to say, and frozen joint, we used to say. Okay. This is something about the machined joint, what we are providing at the heel of crossing and toe of crossing. Okay. This is a frozen joint or gap loss joint. And uh, this is symmetrical split. I already told you, no, symmetrical split is not what normally the turnout will be, you no, know, one main line and the turnout line will be there. The main line will be straight and turnout will be a uh, turnout, okay, turning out, okay. There will be diversion. But uh, the case symmetrical split uh, with respect to straight line, the equal diversion will be taking place on uh, uh, both sides. Okay, but suppose the angle of crossing is F uh, with respect to shuttle line of the uh, you know the line. I mean our uh, your switch portion and uh, step by two, you know, fifty percent cross uh, diversion that side and fifty percent diversion will be other side. Okay. This is called symmetrical split. This is a, this is a, you know normally we are uh, using you know one in eight and a half turn out only we are can, using as a symmetrical split. Uh, and particularly this one we are where we are using you know uh, in, in the case of a loop line you no know, isolation purpose we used to put some sand dump you know 
and that location used to introduce the one in eight of symmetrical split so that you know we will be able to get the advantages of the one in one in twelve because one in twelve normally you know this is a very very long compared to the one in eight and of uh, turnout the one in twelve overall length will be more it will occupy more length. But whereas when you are providing one in twelve, uh, we are able to consume less space at the same time we are able to get the advantage of one in twelve. Okay, that means once. Uh, this is a degree, no? This this is a curvature will be off. Suppose this is a, for example, it is 440 meter radius of uh, one, so 2 230 meter radius of one in eight and a half. When you are, uh, you know, uh, designing, when you are uh, laying a symmetrical split, uh, the resultant radius of the the lead curve will be double the uh, radius. The 230 means 460 464 uh, meter radius will come. So this is a, even the curve, lead curvature, you know, uh, gets flattened at the same time. We are able to get the uh, advantage of one in twelve. That means we are able to uh, put the, I mean, uh, symmetrical blade in a lesser space. At the same time, one more advantage. Normally, when we are having uh, connecting this other line, this is a main track. This line goes to sand dump. This uh, why we are putting is isolation because in case of any false movement is there, instead of going to main line and uh, meet to side accident uh, and derail. I it will go to or uh, sand up. It will go to sand up and and uh, that's why it's derailed. Uh, so that the major major missiles will be uh, affected. Okay, infringing with the main lane. So when it is just uh, going to sand up and derailing, it should, it should be uh, you know derailed enough away from the uh, main lane. That is why uh, this type of arrangement symmetric split normally we are providing. Okay, and we are u- using for that you know uh, one in terms of uh, uh, points of crossing using and. Uh, Laying as a uh, symmetrical split, so this is about the symmetrical split. Okay, and another thing, fan-shaped layout. See, of late uh, we are having only fan-shaped layout. Where fan-shaped in what? Uh, it is a PS sleeper. So those days and all originally, no, when we are we are laying a sleeper in the wooden sleeper and uh, steel sleepers like that, and subsequently uh, after the in- invention of you know. This one PSC, I mean PSC sleeper. We started laying PSC sleeper because of a uh, lot of advantages, you know, over uh, other type of sleepers. And um, the PSC sleepers, you know, originally at the time of uh, introduction, we were having a uh, uh, two different sets of uh, sleepers. That means uh, when you want to lay the uh, points and crossing RH turnout means we'll have a separate set of sleeper for RH, and we'll have separate set, sets of sleepers for LH. Okay, only a double neutral like that. Okay. But we, uh, because of the you know the two different uh, sets of sleeper, uh, there will be there was a problem, you no know? problem of uh, inventory at the same time. Suppose mixing up sleeper will take place, very difficult to uh, segregate. All the problems we were facing it, and uh, it was contemplated again uh, to design for a common set of sleepers uh, which can be laid for both LH turnout as well as RH turnout. So out of that, uh, it was designed and. Uh, uh, Started manufacturing, and nowadays we are having only fan shape. Wherever we know, we have only fan shape layout. Okay, here you see the sleeper shall be perpendicular. But when when laying the sleepers, we must be very careful, and we should take all uh, care. Uh, I just uh, read out the you know whatever you know definition. I mean instruction given in the stipulation. Let let me read first. Uh, the sleeper shall be perpendicular to the straight track in such portion only in lead portion. The sleepers will be inclined at half an angle between the normal to straight and curved track at the point. Okay, this is one. I'll just explain the, the drawing. The spacing has been worked out separately for the both rail sleepers in the crossing portion and shall be proportional to the bisector of the crossing angle. Okay, some this is like that we have given. Anyway, I'll go to the drawing. I'll just show. See, as far as fan shape layout is concerned, I already told you know uh, it is a, a common set of sleeper. It can be used for both the LH and the RH turnout. But strictly, we have to follow some spacing spacing of sleepers for each play, point, each location that we are supposed to follow in order to achieve the the perfectly. As far as the fan shape layout is concerned, you see the orientation is orientation sleeper is very very important. In switch portion, you know, from SRJ to the the switch, you know the hill of crossing, you know there is switch. That portion, the sleeper should be perpendicular to the main line. Perpendicular to the main line. From the switch portion to the toe of crossing, you know, toe of crossing we have. Toe. This is a lead curve, you know, we curvature we have. Here the orientation orientation of sleeper should be. It should be how how should be 
perpendicular no the, we are making perpendicular to the main line at the same time we are making one line perpendicular to the uh, this one curvature and the thing that this is a point we are drawing the tangent and we are drawing a perpendicular and uh, it should be half of the angle it's okay via media okay so whatever angle no it, it makes the perpendicular to the main line and perpendicular to the uh, turn out line at the point where we are inserting sleeper okay that angle makes you no know, that divided by 2 will be our uh, orientation of sleepers that is why off the angle sleeper shall be exactly at off angle at each location okay this is the orient of sleeper so as far as uh, up to the uh, toe of crossing it is like that and uh, uh, toe of crossing to heel of crossing and we are supposed to lay uh, should be perpendicular to the bisector of the cross this is the bisector and perpendicular should be per perpendicular to the bisector of the crossing this is the way we have to lay in the case of um, uh, rh and out like that this is a, this is a perpendicular again this way it will come okay like that uh, but uh, spacing will be different basing you know spacing on the uh, need not bother about this thing and all and uh, we have a table of spacing once we follow the spacing automatically we are able to get the orientation that means if you are at every point you know the distance in the m1 should be equal to the lk m1 equal to lk the both uh, the, you know this um, offset should be equal such a way the spacing has been added and we can simply follow the spacing we will be able to get the uh, perfect orientation of sleepers okay that means spacing should be how it is to be marked you know here and all uh, main line we have to mark spacing and here also main line, this line only we have to mark uh, okay we have to mark spacing and here uh, okay this, this is up to some, no problem here up to sorry is here up to switch no problem because main line and from switch portion you know this line up to toe of crossing this main line here and also the inside main line we have to give the, up to the toes of crossing toe of crossing but in the case of uh, crossing portion the bisector we have to draw the bisector now that spacing you have to mark okay that spacing you have to mark so shall be perpendicular to the bisector line okay this is something about the uh, fan shaped layout you can go back okay and uh, for the egg one uh, you see here as far as the only of concern 1 to 13 okay is switch portion and as far as the uh, lead portion is concerned 14 to 41 here only the uh, spacing will be different uh, outside and inside like that and as far as crossing portion is concerned this is 40 to 54 and 1 in 12 1 in 20 and uh, this is switch portion 21 to 64 lead portion 65 to 83 is a crossing portion 1 in 16 1 in 20 switch portion 21 to 75 uh, this one lead portion and crossing portion is 76 to 101 okay okay this comes with the fan, fan shaped layout what we are uh, at present uh, using okay and uh, some important elements also just I want to say here you see, uh, this is a, a clearly, you know, discuss this is a sketch of your uh, points of crossing. And this is SRJ, this is TTS, this is ATS, this is switch length. Switch length means that is ATS to heel of cross switch length. So, important dimension, switch length is very, very important. You should know, okay, this switch length. Then lead portion, lead length also you must know, okay, this is a lead length from heel of crossing to the no, no of crossing. No of crossing, this is called uh, lead, lead length. And uh, this is your crossing, length of crossing, normally cross, crossing, you know, length of crossing. This is the curvature of the lead. And switch entry angle and crossing angle. These are the dimensions you are supposed to know just uh, uh, for idea. Okay, uh, I, I want to say some duplication is just uh, bear with me. One in eight of 60 kg. This is 1835, 1895. And uh, for both, you know, 50 kg, same only, 1865. And one in uh, 12, it is uh, 25831, and one in 60, uh, this is you know, 35720, and one in 20, 46027. This is switch length. I mean, uh, lead lead length, length of a lead. No, this is a lead portion, lead length. And as well as actual, this forget about this TSS and um, the switch length from ATS to uh, heel. No, this is your uh, 6.4, normally 6.4 meter switch length. And 1 in 12, it is 10, 125. And uh, 1 in 16, 11, 200. And uh, 12, 460, it is for 1 in 20. 
uh, anyway I will also put like this important things okay and uh, as well as uh, this uh, divergence already we have studied you know this already we have seen this one uh, hill divergence hill divergence is there now 182.5 because of divergence more uh, okay this is 182 point in the case of 1 in 12 1 in 175 this is 1 in 16 145 and 1 in 20 133 okay these are dimensions something uh, go to keep in mind um, okay so that uh, update questions so whenever you are facing will be able to answer and this is your uh, this uh, crossing angle crossing angle also if, if you are having the calculated parameter you can go calculate that is a uh, tan of equal to you know what is all 1 by 2 like that you find you can f is equal to tan inverse of 1 by 2 using the relation you can find out the the angle however you can if you are able to buy hard you can buy hard this is a crossing what is degree 42 35 it is for one in end of one in 12 4 degree 45 49 and uh, 1 in 16 it is 3 degree 34 35 and 1 in 20 it's 2 degree 41 45 this is a diamond crossing angle and um, this one no crossing length how much this is crossing length for example this 1 in 8 and 8.5 you know 8, 8 and half 300 300 mm and 1 in 12 4350 1 in 16 5400 1 in 20 6200 this is crossing angle, this crossing angle, CL, crossing angle, okay. And uh, coming to switch angle, you know, switch entry angle or switch angle, and in case of one end of, uh, it is only, one end of only, one end of one other, uh, only two angles we have. For one end of only, 0 degree, 46, 59. And rest of the points are crossing, one in 12, one in 16, one in 12, all it is 0 degree, 20. As far as this is over, it is normal switch, one, not thick of switch, okay. This is something about the, um, uh, switch angle or switch entry angle okay and also lead curve is concerned this is lead curve okay lead curve this is our radius 232 260 1 in 8 and, half. and uh, 1 in 12 441 360 and 1 in uh, 16 784 983 and 1 in 20 128 i mean uh, uh, 12 83 100 12 83 100 this is some, the, something about the radius of the lead curve. This is very important. Normally, you know, whenever you want to check the curvature, whether it is curvature or all right or not. So, we can check, you know, we must know the, what is the radius of the curve and uh, accordingly you can find out that, you know, any variation is there. You can check up, you can see, you can decide, you can confirm or we, are, we can go for some corrections. Okay. This is something about the, uh, some general, you know, important dimensions of the uh, points of crossing. Okay. And also some abbreviation, abbreviation also is supposed to know. SRJ means what already we have discussed many times, you know. Stock rail join. And ATS actual toe off switch. And TTS theoretical toe off switch. And uh, HOIS heel off switch. SSD spring setting device. And ANC and actual nose of crossing. And TNC theoretical nose of crossing. TOC toe off crossing. And Nacho see heel of crossing the time. Spring setting device means they normally used to provide in the switch portion, no? So that you know to ensure the perfect housing, uh, like that say it is there. So that we will see uh, the next is next videos. So whenever subject comes, we'll do this. Okay. It's called the SSD. Okay. This is about the abbreviation of the some of the terms. I mean uh, and uh, coming to the drawing numbers, and these are the drawing numbers just for reference. I'm mean, whatever available in the manual only, I'm just reproducing. These were various, uh, you know, turnout 20 kg, 60 kg, and this, this, this is your thick of switch turnout, is the latest. And uh, symmetric hospital, it is because no, I don't. These are the uh, drawing number already available, and uh, we can refer this one for uh, laying, for laying, you know, for laying purpose and other. Uh, if you want to get the spacing of sleepers, everything you know, can get out of these drawings. Okay, and for uh, placing any indent, okay, you must know the drawing number and all. So, this is about the uh, drawing numbers of the various uh, points of crossing. Okay. Uh, of course, now latest one, correct sleep, uh, I think, uh, stuff now we've got 20. This is about the speed, you know, already it is there. Actually, as a speed over the turnout, suppose when a train comes, you know, when it is uh, negotiated in the going to loop line, 
in case of one end of uh, uh, crowd switch it is 15 kmh and one end of thick of crowd switch an emergency crossover for freight stacks exception is 25 kmh okay uh, one is that is for freight stocks only emergency crossover okay not in the exception is this 25 kmh thick of switches and one in eight now symmetrical split with curved switch is 30 kmh because okay just like you know even though it is one in eight now it's just a symmetrical split means you know just like a one in 12 to lack function that is why they go 30 kmh and one in 12 curved switch is normally 30 kmh okay normally uh, we are providing one in 12 now all uh, top points i mean our uh, points running line will be one in 12 only one in 12 points are crossing and uh, the turnout you know speed is 30 kmh when it is negotiating the uh, turnout uh, symmetric split it's in similar to 1 in 12 and that is also they are given 1, 1, 1 in 30 I mean 30 kmph and uh, 1 in 12 is only 15 kmph they given okay since it is a very uh, diversion is very long and um, thick up switch they are given also uh, relax 125 kmph as well as 1 in 12 is concerned as well as 1 in 12 is concerned 50 kmph okay they are given okay so, so this is about the uh, speed restriction over the points and crossing uh, for the trains negotiating going into the loop line. In case of sight line, normal main line now uh, is normal speed only. Okay, this is something about the crash tape uh, issued recently. In the IRPWM, additional crash and slip. Okay, number twenty. Okay, uh, I think with that we will conclude uh, our, uh, this video and uh, we will see in the next video and we will continue about the, the laying and maintenance operation of the Pants and Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.